because it was real. Let's talk about something else that's real. Wade Keller would report that there was a, a bit of a situation, WrestleMania weekend between JBL and Lance Storm. Now at this time, Lance Storm is one of the trainers at WWE's Ohio Valley wrestling in Louisville, Kentucky. And he's telling some of the wrestlers that he's training about what to expect when you get called up to the main roster. And he makes a comment about how the SmackDown locker room is more old school and there's likely to be more hazing there. Of course, Lance frowns upon that and thinks it's passe and unprofessional. He even mentions JBL and hardcore Holly by name as two perpetrators to be leery of. And he tells one of the young guys who maybe ran his mouth in a way that JBL didn't like when he said something like, um, being relegated to tag matches that offends JBL. And so he takes him to wrestlers court. Lance storm says, don't play by those rules. Eventually all of this gets back to JBL and Bob Holly. And when they see Lance storm, Bob Holly tells him to fuck off and JBL cuts a scathing promo and challenges him to a fight. Uh, of course, Lance storm tries to deescalate the situation. Some would say it looks like Lance was backing off, uh, from a fight and others would say JBL was just overreacting and maybe looking foolish. I know you weren't there for this, but you probably heard about it. What'd you hear about the JBL OVW Lance storm dust up WrestleMania weekend? Oh, I think it was much ado about nothing in. Just look, you know, the the way that our locker rooms were, we had locker room leaders and we had guys that ran their locker rooms in a little different way. So that's the way it was at the time. And it was more of a fraternity and the boys looked after each other and they policed their own locker rooms. To me, that's a good thing. I think that it's good when you have the boys that take care of their own issues. If they get out of hand, then people have to step in and take care of it. But it wasn't what people would call, you know, the hazing and the bullying. I disagree with that. And at least from what I saw and from what I experienced, and I think that it just got blown out of proportion perception wise for people that didn't care for, either John or Holly or whoever the hell else that they wanted to pick on at the time. In, in, in many ways, you know, the, the, the wrestling media and a lot of them have, have tried to bully and, uh, people with their words and things that they weren't even there for. So I think it was much ado about nothing more than anything else. Wade would write the attitude within WWE right now towards both Batista and Cena is that they are not measured against the rock, Steve Austin, or even Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. When they were all top babyface champions, Vince McMahon has made it clear to the internal critics that Cena and Batista are there because of the lack of fresher, more ready options in his view. And thus it's expected. They will all make mistakes or not get pops comparable to Austin or rock at their peaks. They are quote unquote projects who have weaknesses at this point. And everyone is expected to help either camouflage or eventually eliminate their tutoring and working with them. Quote, neither of them is better than mid carters by the standards of 15 or 20 years ago, but they have varying levels of charisma and marketable looks says one WWE insider. Cena is considered stronger on the mic with youth on his side. There will be more patience with him. Batista is considered weaker on the mic, but moreover at this point as the top level draw, one insider doesn't like this approach stating. How many examples are there of more seasoned wrestlers who are more ready for this kind of push who have been saddled with lame comedy acts, which mean nothing while Batista is being pushed into this top spot prematurely. So some criticism here, and we've sort of talked about, you know, just the mentality of Vince McMahon, uh, and well, WWE creative as a whole, as we're sort of transitioning, you know, by Oh one, you've eliminated all of your competition. And you feel like you've done everything. So let's try something new. Well, we'll try Austin as a heel that doesn't work. So by Oh two, Hey, let's try something new. Let's, let's push Brock Lesnar and Kurt angle and let's see what we can do. And then by Oh three, well, okay. Now let's try and maybe do something a little different with rock and Austin as like a last hurrah and by Oh four. Well, Lesnar and Goldberg, they want out of here. Let's go with a smaller 
more in-ring work rate. Maybe they don't have the big charisma and the big promos, but they got great matches. Damn it. Let's go with Benoit and Guerrero. And then by 05, we're pivoting again. And it just feels like it sort of becomes rent slather repeat this time. Uh, we're going back with larger stars, but maybe they don't have the in-ring skill that maybe an Eddie Guerrero and Benoit do. It's John Cena and Batista. Did it feel like every year you guys were trying to reload and try something new in an effort to find the next Hulk Hogan or the next Steve Austin? You're always looking to try You're always looking for that star that's going to break out of the pack and be the next mega superstar. So at this time... Yeah, these were two guys that we looked at that we felt based on not not just their work and what have you, but their attitude, their personality outside of the ring and their willingness to go the extra mile, which is what you need with a top guy. You need someone that can hold his own on the Today Show or on late night television. You need someone that can get out of that. And both of these guys, they both look good. They both spoke well and they had enough charisma that the audience was going to care about them. They may not love them and cheer them. Go, oh my God, here's my fucking hero, but they would care one way or the other. And both John Cena and Dave Batista fit that bill to a T. So yes, it was time to experiment and time to, put them out there and sink or swim, throw them out in the deep end and let's see what happens. Hey, Hey, it's Conrad Thompson here to tell you a little more about what adfreeshows.com is all about. Get early ad free access to more than a dozen of your favorite wrestling podcasts every single week, starting at just nine bucks. That's less than 20 cents an episode each month. And yes, you can listen to them all directly through Apple podcasts or your regular podcast apps. How easy is that? Ad-Free Shows also has thousands of hours worth of bonus content and docu-series like Title Chase, Eric Fires Back, Conversations with Conrad, and The Insiders, plus new series like The Book with David Crockett, Monday Mailbags with Mike Chioda and Nick Patrick, and a whole lot more. And you want to talk about early, you can't get any earlier than listening to the shows live. You can be a part of the live studio audience as we record the podcast. Plus, ride shotgun alongside your favorite childhood heroes for live watch-alongs, Q&As, and other interactive experiences every single month. Come on now, see for yourself what thousands of other wrestling fans from around the world have discovered. That adfreeshows.com is the best value in wrestling. Check it out today, and hey, when you do, the first week is completely free. Adfreeshows.com. <laughs> 